How can we burn fat? Well, that's what we all want to do. Imagine that we can somehow manipulate our meals so that we can maximize fat burning. How do we do this? Well, first of all, we have to understand what happens to our physiology when we eat. So when we eat food, the hormone insulin starts to rise. And insulin is a storage hormone. It stores some of this energy in our livers and in our fat cells. So sugar gets stored in the liver as glycogen and fat gets stored as well. When we stop eating, the insulin levels start to fall. And what happens is that we start to bring this energy back out. So that when we're fasting, usually during sleeping, for instance, we don't have to constantly eat to feed ourselves because we're generating this energy from the fuel that we've stored away. And this is a normal situation. So you eat, energy gets stored. As you don't eat, the energy comes back out. Now, there are two main fuel sources for the body. The body can uh, burn sugar and the body can burn fat. And you have to understand that the body can switch from one to the other without any problems. This is a normal situation. Sugar is like the money in your wallet. It's easily available, but you can only store a certain limited amount. So you can take it in, you can take it out. It's very easy for the tissues to use. Fat, on the other hand, is like the money in your bank. There's an unlimited amount of storage, but it's not so easy to get to. You have to go to the teller. It's not immediately available to you like the money in your wallet. And this really explains partially why it's so hard to burn fat, because it's not that accessible to you. In fact, you can only get at it after you've burned through all the sugar, because your body is not going to bother of getting the energy from the fat when it has plenty of sugar. Let's look at what happens to the body when you start fasting. If you look at this graph, what it shows you is that where the body is getting its energy from. That's the oxidation rate on the left-hand side. So immediately when you stop eating, what you see is that the body is deriving most of its energy from carbohydrates. That's sugar. And as you, the immediate part after fasting, you can see that most of the energy is still derived from sugar. But after about 24 hours or so, those stores start to run out. The glycogen, which is the stored sugar, is starting to run out. And as you stop getting energy from your sugar, then you can see the green line, which is the fat, the fat burning, starts to ramp up. What you see in essence is a switch here from burning sugar to burning fat. At no time do you see the protein really become a major problem. We're not burning protein for fuel. Protein is what we want our muscles, our tissues to be made out of. It's important. And you see that the body conserves a protein through the entire process. We're not burning muscle, we're burning fat. So what we're really talking about is how to switch over from burning sugar to burning fat. How do you do this? Well, a low carbohydrate, high fat diet is going to prevent the sugar from being stored in the first place. So if there's no sugar being stored, your body is naturally going to be able to go to the fat. But what happens if you have a lot of sugar stored already? Well, fasting is a great way to burn down all this sugar. Once you burn down all this sugar, then you can start burning fat. You want to start fasting. That's terrific. In this short video, I'll tell you everything you need to know to get started. It's terrifically simple. Almost everybody can benefit from fasting, but there are a few exceptions. It's not recommended for children, pregnant or breastfeeding women. Those severely underweight or malnourished should not fast. If you're taking medications, especially if you're taking insulin or diabetic medications, you can still fast but you need to make sure you clear it with your physician first. And that's it. Everybody else can get started right away. There's lots of different ways to fast, but here's the best way to get started. This is the 24-hour fasting period from dinner on day one to dinner on day two. So after you finish your dinner, don't eat anything else, no snacks, just go to sleep and start the next morning with a glass of cold water or a nice cup of hot coffee. And then go to work and pretend like nothing's happening. At lunchtime, you might get hungry. You gotta expect that, but it does get easier with time. You might want to get some green tea or coffee. By the time you finish it, the hunger will have passed. If colleagues ask you out to lunch, well, you can just tell them that you're working 
and you can join them tomorrow. Or you can join them for a coffee break. That's fine. Stay busy throughout the day and plan your fasting days for your busiest days at work. It really helps pass the time. When you get home, start preparing dinner and avoid the temptation to eat a little something first. At dinner, follow a low carbohydrate, high fat diet for maximum effect and add lots of natural fats. That's it. That's a 24 hour fast, it's so simple. How often should you do it? I recommend you do it twice a week. Good luck.